Hey, so welcome back to the series of Fibonacci sequence videos. Um, this is part two. In the first video, I left off with brief mention of the golden section and the logarithmic spiral. Now, in this video, I'd like to go over the golden section with you. Um, in the last video, we're going to do the logarithmic spiral. So here is, once again, Skippy the Duck keeping us company. So what is the golden section? Well, the golden section could be best explained, I think, by using a line, and that line is subdivided into two different segments. Now you have a long segment and a short segment here. Now this divider right here is placed not in a random position. It's placed in the only possible p position on that line that would create a very specific scenario. And that scenario is that the ratio of the length of the entire line to the length of the longer segment is the same as the ratio of the longer segment to the shorter segment. So what do I mean by that? I think using algebra is a pretty good way to illustrate that information. So let's say that the length of the longer segment is A units and the length of the shorter segment is B units and once again the length of the or the ratio of the length of the entire line which could be communicated as A plus B to the longer segment is the same as the ratio of the longer segment to the shorter segment. So whenever this occurs, whenever there's a divider placed in that very position that would cause this situation, it's always going to pump out a very specific number. And that number is called phi. We're going to get into that pronunciation a little bit later. There's some debate about that. But it always is going to be 1 plus radical 5 over 2. And the approximation in decimal form would be 1.618. Now this is an irrational number. So what that means is that the decimals go on forever, which is why I'm drawing these dots and they never repeat a pattern. So it's not like 1.61111 repeating. Like there's no repeating pattern whatsoever. So it's irrational. And there's a symbol that mathematicians tend to use to communicate this number. And that's the phi symbol. Now, the pronunciation, or the spelling at least I should start with, is P-H-I. And the pronunciation, many people think it's phi. And many people think it's phi. I think the Da Vinci Code suggested that this was the explanation. Phi was the pronunciation, rather. Now, um, I'm going to go with phi because when we have the other famous irrational math mathematical number, pi, we look at that i, like we don't call that p, we call that pi. So to me, that's reason enough to go with this pronunciation for now. So, for the duration of the video, I'm just going to call it phi. Now, phi has, happens to have a very beautiful representation in addition to all this, and that would be to represent phi as 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over and so on. And it does indeed go forever like that. That's called in, in math, they call that a continued fraction. So it would definitely go forever. And to me, that's kind of interesting. It's like, well, you know, if I can't sit down and actually write this out, then it does it even like exist in the real world? Is it a number that can be pointed to? And I think that that raises a lot of interesting, not only mathematical questions, but a lot of um, interesting philosophical questions even. And then you can get into even like, well, geez, is there any number that I can actually point to? Does any number in its true essence exist? Uh, so that's kind of interesting as well. Uh, nonetheless, if you were to create a rectangle with the side lengths given by this proportion, we would call it a golden rectangle. And I think I forgot to mention this, this situation up here this line that's being subdivided in this way, that's called the golden section. Now this is the golden rectangle, or it would be the golden rectangle if the rectangle was such that the long side would be A, in the way that's um, mentioned there, and the width would be B, where, where the ratio of these two is the same as the ratio of these two. 
Now, once again, that's called a um, golden rectangle. Golden rectangle has an interesting history in uh, Western civilization, at least. Um, many artists and architects took it to be, or considered it to be, inherently pleasing to the eye. Uh, so much so that even you know, amazing artists like Leonardo da Vinci did indeed use the golden section and the golden rectangle in their work. Um, they found a way to, to, to use these proportions in their work. Um, whether or not the uh, golden section or the golden rectangle is inherently pleasing to the eye, I think is definitely up for debate. That's definitely a subjective thing. I even remember seeing a uh, mathematician uh, video on it, it was like on TED.com or something like that, where he was in a, a room full of uh, like 200 university students and he handed out papers to each one of them and the paper had all these different rectangles that had like different proportions and one of them and they were all un they were all unlabeled one of them happened to be the golden rectangle and he asked the students so it's like hey uh, point to the one or write down the one that you think is the most inherently beautiful and very seldom was the golden rectangle chosen so obviously that presents a pretty strong case for the golden rectangle not being inherently beautiful um, and uh, unfortunately that's kind of like a raining on the parade especially because I think it, it's kind of fun to believe that something could be inherently beautiful and, and personally I do a little art on the side I wouldn't mind using it uh, because I actually do like the way it looks personally uh, and also would represent kind of an interesting thing to do in your art and an interesting challenge even uh, to, to, to do in your art so, so nonetheless um, that is the golden rectangle and furthermore um, there are theories about things like the Egyptian pyramids and the Notre Dame Cathedral being built in a way that that heavily used these proportions where if you were to look at like a layout of one of the tombs in the pyramid maybe there'd be an object over here and like this would be a golden rectangle now that's something to be approached with skepticism just because if somebody really wanted to see golden rectangles of course they could kind of force golden rectangles everywhere they look by making like the lines thicker and stuff like that so to me that's something to be approached with skepticism and once again it's another example of something that I think would be fun to believe but um, especially if you're dealing with you know the realm of mathematics you want to be as objective as possible it's kind of like the point of mathematics and, and science in general you know, current science. So, uh, nonetheless, here's the golden rectangle. Golden rectangle has another interesting property where, like, if you were to, um, <laughs> unfortunately, it's not going to really look like it because of the way I drew proportions, but try to imagine this. If you were to cut out a square, let's say there's a square, okay, um, the space that would be left over, this stuff right there, that would be a golden rectangle. Alright, now unfortunately I drew this thing in a way that doesn't really demonstrate that very well, but you can kind of get my meaning. If you drew, if you cut out a square, this space that's left over would indeed be a golden rectangle. And then guess what? You could cut out another square, and then another square. In fact, you could do squares in this spiraling fashion, and in fact that's a preview of um, the third video. We're going to get into those spirals a little bit. To me that's kind of fun. It's kind of interesting. So, anyway, how does, um, how does this golden section, or phi in general, relate to the Fibonacci numbers. If you recall, the Fibonacci numbers were 1, 1, 2, 3, and they're listed in such a way that each number is the sum of the two preceding numbers. It goes on from there. The way that phi relates to the Fibonacci sequence is if you were to take the ratios of each successive Fibonacci numbers, it would be this 1 over 1, and the next one in the sequence of ratios would be 2 over 1, 3 over 2, and so on. If you were to keep going like this, you would get infinitely closer without ever quite arriving at 5. In other words, if you kept going, you would get infinitely closer without ever arriving at this 1.618 1 number that has a decimal that goes forever. And in fact, you get to 
one of them would be 144 over 89, and that that already brings us to 1.618 to three decimal places to the three very common decimal places that mathematicians use to represent phi in decimal form. So that's a way that phi indeed relates to the Fibonacci numbers. Um, as far as practical usage, if you remember from the first video, Fibonacci was concerned with predicting the population of pairs of rabbits over time. And this very amazing number phi is helpful in that regard because of something called Binet's formula. Now Binet's formula was deduced in 1843 by Jacques Binet, who was yet another example of a crazy mathematical you know, genius in our history. And back then, a lot of these mathematicians, they weren't just mathematicians, they were astronomers and physicists and, and such. And he deduced this formula. The formula itself could be represented in this way, where we have f sub n equals, and, and here's where phi comes into play. Phi to the n power, minus 1, minus phi to the negative n, and that would all over be, be all over radical 5, radical 5 making a comeback here in this video. So the practical usage of phi is such that this formula could be used to figure out the population of rabbits at any given time. So for example, let's say we wanted to know the population of rabbits um, at 100 months. So rather, instead of um, writing out, you know, like the list of all those Fibonacci numbers, that would be like ridiculous hard work because you have to add like all these numbers and that would be extremely tedious to get to the 100th term. You could use this formula instead, and, and the way to represent that usage would be to, to say f sub 100, so the n stands for the amount of months gone by, and that would be phi raised to the 100th power minus this, and obviously you can see where this is going. Now, it so happens that this would pump out a really, really ridiculous number. Um, I'm going to attempt to write it right now. It would end up being to 3, 3, 5, 4, 2, 2, 4, 8, 4, 8, comma. And we are going to have to go down here, unfortunately. 179, 2, 6, 1, 9, 1, 5. And believe it or not, we're not done yet. Zero, seven, five. There would be that many rabbits after a hundred months. It's a lot of rabbits. So that is some practical usage of this very amazing number, phi. So stay tuned for video three, where we go over the logarithmic spiral, which um, explains a little bit more of the amazing features of the golden section, the Fibonacci numbers, and um, the golden rectangle, actually. See you then.